We've hit the home stretch here, Bear. We got uh, girls basketball seating meetings this weekend coming up, and we'll know the brackets as we break down uh, girls basketball next week. But uh, if you've been watching along, you know we're going back and forth a little bit. And this is a boys basketball week, which is just fine because we've got a couple of conference races that are really coming down to the wire here and yeah. uh, some real big games this week that will determine um, whether they're going to go right down to the finish or and, not. And starting with, uh, on the east side of Janesville, our own Craig Cougar boys who are, uh, you know, still there with a chance to, to uh, you know, probably share a Big 8 conference title, but huge games this week with uh, Mattis Memorial and uh, Beloit Memorial. So the Cougars, big test for them after the two road losses to uh, Middleton and Sun Prairie. Uh, you know, got healthy again against Parker, and, and now it's it's again it's it's two big games that uh, you know could go a long way in determining what what happens in the Big Eight. Right. We start the week off uh, headed into Tuesday at least. Uh, Mattis Memorial was on top, uh, looking for what is it, 13, 14, 14 in 14 a row, fourteen straight, uh, twelve and two. Uh, you know, not maybe as flashy of a team as they have been in the past, but they've been getting it done. Sun Prairie, maybe uh, the hottest team in the conference, I would say, one uh, one and a half games back at ten and three. They were hosting a game Tuesday night, so I'm thinking there'll be a game out by the time you're probably yep. watching this. And they play Thursday night, right? And they, Memorial and Sun Prairie Memorial play Memorial and Sun night. Prairie play Thursday night, and that, and that will kind of set up the stage uh, for Craig. For Craig, right. obviously they have to they have to beat Beloit yep. first, and I think Beloit's going to be out for some revenge because yeah, uh, Craig really took it to them in the first them. first game. Um, but if Memor if some Prairie can get past Memorial, uh, that would leave both teams with three losses, and then you'd have Middleton and Craig maybe with four losses. Four losses, right? And it's and then it really comes down to the wire, and then you've got Craig going to Memorial uh, on Saturday night, which would be a huge game yep. uh, if everything kind of falls right. Even if it doesn't, it's going to be big uh, in terms of seeding, in terms of uh, in terms of the conference still. Right. But if it's if it's two teams at three losses and two teams at four. Going into Saturday night, uh, it's going to be real fun. And the thing is, is, I think that the one team to keep an eye on is Madison East. Not that the Pergolds are going to contend for the title, they're not, but they're good enough to play with those top four teams. And I'm sure some of those teams got to play East yet. And uh, East could be a, a wild card in that mix as far as playing spoiler because the Pergolders got a lot of talent on that team and, and they could give any of those four teams a good game. And I think Beloit too. Uh, Beloit they've too, kind yeah. of been up and down, but they've won some of those big, some big matchups, yep. uh, including being Middleton early in the year. So you can't, you can't overlook them. I nope. guess is the is what nope. I'm trying to say there. So uh, a huge week for the Big Eight, uh, and we'll, you know, we'll have everything. We'll, we'll have all the coverage along here uh, throughout the week as we try to sort out whether it's going to be a real hodgepodge or whether Madison Memorial can kind of break same away. Old, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the Rock Valley, uh, in the Rock Valley, obviously, we congratulations to Turner. And not, yep. No surprise, uh, Alec Fruin and gang have run away with the South. They already clinched that title there, uh, but the North is a, a, a whole different story. You saw uh, Evansville last week against East Troy, and. Uh, East Troy kind of took it to him. I don't know. The Trojans have kind of been I, Evansville's bugaboo a little I'll bit. I'll tell you, nobody was more surprised in the entire gym than I was because uh, East Troy looked like an East Troy team from the past. I thought I was watching Nate Dodge and the boys play again because they looked really good. Um, you know, kind of just ran Evansville out of the gym by hitting threes. John Syriax, who Coach Daryl Rayfield called the most improved player he's ever had, um, you know, he kind of took over at times. And, and really, Evansville on the offensive end just couldn't get anything going. Brennan Banks struggled. Um, you know, they didn't really get any scoring from, uh, from any of those seniors and, uh, Sully Geske was their leading scorer and he's a freshman and really just after a good start for Evansville, uh, it, it just fell apart from there. East Troy just dominated and, and, you know, like I said, it was a 27, 28 point victory, which nobody saw that coming. No, out. not, not that sort of score. And, uh, what we've got now is McFarland at 11 and one, Evansville one game back at 10 and two and East Troy another game back at nine and three. Going into the showdown Thursday night at McFarland is Evansville at McFarland. Basically, uh, if the Spartans can win, they'll, you know, more or less have probably clinched the North. And if Evansville wins, all of a sudden, yeah, things are pretty interesting. Right. Um, I saw McFarland's only loss in, in league play at Turner, and Turner picked them apart. So <laughs> I don't know if that was just an off night or uh, Turner. Turner did play very well, and a lot of the contrib the supporting cast really stepped up that night. So maybe it was that. I'm not sure, but um, you know, between me seeing that game and you seeing Evansville not look so great, 
I don't really know what to make well, of how and, this is going to shake out. I told Steve Krupke, in fact, he might have even mention me, he goes, don't cover us anymore because every time I go see the Blue Devils play, they lose. Uh, I saw them against McFarland at home, got beat. I saw them against East Troy at home, got beat. I saw them, they did beat Edgerton, but didn't play very well. And, and it's just one of those things where uh, they better start cranking it up because, uh, you know, this was a, the, la the bar was set high this season with that group with the five four of the five starters returning and, and a really good younger uh, bunch of kids as well. So uh, they got to pick it up a notch, and, and a great time to start would be Thursday at McFarland, especially if they get any hopes of a Rock Valley North title, they've got to win Thursday. Absolutely. Uh, Badger South, still pretty interesting as well. You got Stoughton unbeaten 7-0, and Edgewood a game back, and Monona Grove one game back of there. They still got some duking it out to do. Uh, unfortunately, Milton, not so much in that mix, but uh, they got a chance against... Uh, an Oregon team coming up to maybe yep. maybe pick up a victory Friday night, and in the lakes, I think we've got to we've got to mention Elkhorn here. Elkhorn, uh, Alex again, Easter Day, one again on Monday night uh, be behind Easter Day and Ross Ingersoll. Those two have kind of been the one-two punch there, and uh, they're a game back of Burlington and Westosha. And I'm not sure if they can catch them just based on some of the. I don't know if there's a whole lot of high-powered games, games left there to, yeah. to overcome those two, but uh, you know Elkhorn, a, a great job to uh, be in the mix there. And uh, those two players, you've had a chance to see them play. Uh, pretty fun to watch. I like them both. Uh, Ingersoll big enough to probably play, you know, Division Two somewhere, six eight, six seven, something like that. And you know, runs the floor pretty well. Can hit the outside jumper. And, and Easter Day's just a solid, just an all around good solid player. You know, uh, Elkhorn had that pipeline to to uh, UW Whitewater with the two Bryson brothers, and uh, I could see Alex Easterday doing the same thing and, and heading over to Whitewater to play because he's good enough to play at that level. And, you know, for the Elks, uh, you know, just a, a fun team to watch. You know, they've got a couple of good young players as well, and, uh, you know, uh, Josh Gatrude's done a great job with that team, and uh, they get after it defensively. That's that's what sticks out to me the most is, is they really uh, make things tough for the other teams. Uh, those teams... Not not the big games in that conference as there are in the others this no. week. So we'll have to unless somebody slips up, uh, things might stay that way for a little while, and we'll see uh, how those things shake out. So there's where your conferences kind of stand here, going in the last couple weeks of the regular season. Uh, follow along on GazetteExtra.com and follow us on Twitter because we'll be at some of these big games. We do uh, we do have one shout out to give too. Oh, another one. We, we do got? have a shout out. We have a gentleman in our area with. 2,000 points in yes. his career. Yes, how about that? Um, so, uh, Alex Hainis, is that right? Jacob. Jacob right? Hainis, yes. yes. Uh, I don't care where you're playing. I don't care if you're playing in your driveway. You score 2,000 points in your career, uh, you got some skills. So Go back uh, and check out some yeah. of his paper if you want. Tom yeah. Miller caught up with him and some coaches and stuff. from Some pretty impressive stuff. Like I say, I, I don't care what competition you're playing against. Oak Hill, right? Oak Hill Christian yeah. School, yep. Um, so, uh, kind of cool. Kudos to him. That, yeah. yeah, so... Um, that's where we stand right now. We'll be back next week. We'll break down some of the girls' uh, WIA tournament brackets. Uh, that'll be right around the corner here. And, uh, yeah, you can follow along and see how these conference races shake out at GazetteExtra.com and on Twitter. And we'll see you back here next week. Take care, everybody.